Welcome to Texas on the MVP Show. In this podcast series, I hope to go beneath the surface and understand the motivations, contributions, and life of MVPs and the role they play in the community to enable you, the listener, to make an informed choice about what's involved in joining this worldwide family. The format for the show is that of a fireside chat. Full show notes for this episode can be found at nz365guy.com forward slash 32. Now, on with the show. Good morning, everybody. Well, I'm here with uh, Larry. Larry, why don't you do, go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, good morning. This is uh, Larry Lentz in San Antonio, Texas. Wow, from the other side of the well, from the other side of the world, for me. What's what's uh, what's so great about Texas? Uh, everything. Yeah, uh, biggest state, or used to be the biggest state, but biggest state that uh, doesn't have ice ninety percent of the time. <laughs> and San Antonio is where I live and uh, lived here all my uh, considerable lifetime. Wow. And uh, just kind of love it. Excellent. So tell me, what's, uh, what's uh, you know, I've heard that uh, a food, uh, particularly barbecue and things like that, uh, is some of the famous things of uh, Texas. Can you tell me a bit about the uh, food scene down there? Oh, absolutely. Uh down here in San Antonio, we not only have good steaks and barbecue, and we consider beef to be barbecue, not pulled pork like in other areas, mm-hmm. but uh, also we're kind of the home of Tex-Mex. If, mm-hmm. if you're anywhere north of uh, probably New Braunfels, which is about 30 miles north of here, you're not in Tex-Mex country. But right. we've got uh, some excellent uh, Mexican food down here in San Antonio. Excellent. And so, and so, if you have guests coming from out of town, what's a, what's the kind of things you show them around to see and do in Texas? Uh, in Texas, Texas is an awful big place. So, if somebody comes down, we'll probably concentrate on San Antonio. Uh, we uh, uh, the Riverwalk is probably one of the uh, uh, more uh, famous and popular uh, spots. Uh, it's not a real wide river, but it's got, uh, that's where all the, the nightlife basically in San Antonio is, all the uh, the fun bars and so on. Uh, we're fixing to go into what's called Fiesta Week. Uh, actually, I think it officially starts tomorrow, and it's a bit more than just a week. Uh, next week is the main uh, time, and on uh, Monday night, a uh, uh, organization here uh, trying to think of the right term it's a non-profit but they uh, uh, anyway it's called the cavaliers and they're having the cavaliers river parade on the uh, san antonio river and we'll have several hundred thousand people lined up uh, watching that parade live downtown as well as on tv where i'll be watching it but uh, that's always a, a pretty neat deal and then there are parades uh and uh, events all week long. Uh, the uh, next Friday, a uh, week from this Friday, uh, they have what's called the Battle of Flowers Parade. And it's called the Battle of Flowers because back when it first started, way back in the late 1800s, uh, some of the ladies uh, parked or, or stopped their carriages in front of the uh, Alamo and uh, threw roses at each other. That became the uh, name of it, the Battle of Flowers Parade. And it's a uh, thing. And then we have the world's largest illuminated night parade on Saturday night. And all kinds of parties and uh, talk about the food. We have something called Night in Old San Antonio, which is held down in a place downtown called La Vieta, the little village. And... uh, uh, that gets awfully crowded down there, I tell you, but, uh, it's, uh, it goes on from Tuesday through Friday and there are all kinds of carnivals and all kinds of stuff that goes on. Wow. Sounds like plenty is happening. <laughs> so tell me, Larry, how did you get into, um, your career? How did you end up where you are today? Uh, can you step us through the journey there? It's a long history given my age, but, uh, I uh, I started off in the financial world. Actually, I started off in the Army uh, back during the Vietnam War. Uh, when I got out, I'd always figured I'd be a stockbroker. So I was a stockbroker for a while and 
uh, the uh, the market peaked at a thousand and nineteen right after I got registered. Never never to see that lofty number, which seems pretty minuscule today because it'll move that much in a in a day. Uh, but, uh, finally decided that that was not the place for me, went into the financial world and that kind of got interested in computers, uh, bought a, uh, a TRS 80 model one and started playing around with that. And then, uh, went to work for, uh, for EDS, uh, Ross Perot's old company was with them for, uh, for seven years. And then decided I'd always wanted to be on my own by the time I was 45. And so, by golly, I did so. <laughs> and uh, uh, went off on my own, founded Lentz Computer Services, and was in Lentz, or still in Lentz Computer Services. That was back in 1989. So this is my 29th year, I guess, something like that as an independent Most of that time I spent taking care of small businesses networking needs, uh, setting up the servers, providing the hardware, software, and expertise for that. Uh, But I was also involved in uh, uh, contact management programs. Uh, Got hooked on ACT back in uh, early 1990 and was sort of the ACT guru of San Antonio and South Texas for a number of years and then switched over to Goldmine in uh, 2006, or excuse me, in not 2006, switch over to gold mine in uh, 1998 and uh, was a gold mine gold partner at one point. Um, then uh, in 2004, and it's kind of interesting, now one of these days I'm going to write a little memoir on, uh, you know, life is a series of choices, uh, some good, uh, some not so good, and some lucky. And uh, some reluctantly made, but uh, they turn out hopefully good. But uh, a friend of mine, Harry Brailsford, who's uh, up in uh, Bainbridge Island in Chicago, I mean, in uh, Seattle, uh, I had been writing some articles for him. And uh, uh, as a thank you, he invited me to a a uh, conference he was having and has had, uh, I think he's still doing them actually, uh, called SMB Nation. And it was, mm-hmm. in, I remember. Yeah, I was held in, in uh, Seattle. And I at first said, oh, gee, I don't want to spend the money to go up there. He was footing the bill for the, uh, uh, for the conference, but not for the travel and hotel. Finally, I decided, no, I'm going to go ahead. So that was one of those decisions that uh, I kind of reluctantly made that turned out to be a good one because uh, at that conference, I met an awful lot of uh, small business server MVPs and the conference was uh, uh, focused on small Microsoft small business server, which was real popular back then. And uh, I hadn't quite decided I wanted to go to uh, Microsoft CRM, which uh, was a fairly new product at the time and seemed to be kind of devoid of creature features compared to something like uh, Goldmine. Anyway, I uh, uh, met a bunch of folks up there. And uh, a couple of them uh, were also interested in CRM. Uh, one gentleman by the name of Scott Colson put on a, uh, uh, a presentation about CRM. Uh, I didn't actually attend his uh, session other than the last tale of it because I was uh, at another session by a new friend of mine named Ann Stanton, who was presenting on blogging or something like that. Yeah, of course you do. And Anne became one of the, uh, Anne and Scott actually became uh, two of the very early um, MVPs. And uh, they uh, they nominated me, and I was uh, really kind of floored uh, that I was nominated for CRM uh, instead of small business server, because that's really where my focus had been, although I had been involved with this type of program uh, uh, since the very beginning. And so I... Uh, was nominated and awarded uh, my first uh, award back in January of 2006 and have wow. been, yeah, wow. <laughs> it's been a while. Things have changed a lot too over that time, but uh, here I are now, uh, what, uh, 12 and a half years later. 
Mm, incredible, incredible. So what area do you specialize in business applications or dynamics nowadays? Well, certainly uh, as far as the, the program Jonder, still uh, uh, dynamic CRM, as I uh, noticed that most of the folks at, uh, on the Microsoft team still refer to it. Uh, I guess officially it's customer engagement. Um, my uh, uh, occupational focus is primarily uh, teaching. I've uh, kind of gotten away from going out and and uh, beating the bushes and going out and, and taking care of uh, folks on on site and that kind of thing like I did for you know, 20 uh, some odd years, uh, taking care of small business networks and so on. And so I, uh, I teach courses online. I go through a uh, company out of uh, uh, Delaware called ONLC, ONLC.com, and uh, get to teach from the uh, comfort of my own home. I don't have to mess with airlines and worrying about fan blades coming out uh, through the window from the engine like happened here yesterday. Is that right? Well, and, uh, so that's pretty much my uh, my current focus. And so, are you delivering a lot of e uh, Dynamics th three six five e learning? Is that right? Uh, well, I'm uh, the courses I'm using are being adapted from the Dynamics Learning Portal, so we're using those uh, those classes and uh, doing it uh, virtually over the internet. They're they're live uh, courses. You know, the the students are interacting, uh, similar as you and I are interacting, and they can see my uh, uh, my demos and my slides, and I can watch their uh, their work on when they're working labs, which is actually pretty good because I can you know sit here and and see and zoom in on on the different students and kind of keep an eye on what they're doing as opposed to being in a classroom uh, where you have to walk around and kind of look and and wait till somebody has a problem to uh, try to help them out. Yeah, no, very good. So tell me, in what way has been awarded the MVP over 12 years ago for you now? How, how has that affected your career? Well, it's changed my focus from uh, <laughs> from computer hardware to uh, to the CRM, uh, naturally. I uh, Another little series of, uh, of decisions, if you will, back in, uh, I think early on, I forget exactly when it was, it was probably somewhere late in 2006, uh, I had a call out of the blue from a uh, uh, training school up in Chicago, of all places, and uh, wanted me to uh, uh, come up and, and teach a CRM class that they had going. And I'd never taught officially a CRM class. And so I said, well, when? He said, Monday. <laughs> and this was like Wednesday. <laughs> and I went, oh. Yeah. And uh, so I said, well, no, I don't quite think I can do that. And uh, then I kind of had a little persuasion from my other half, if you know what I mean. And so I called him back, says, OK, let me uh, let me give it a shot. So I hopped on an airplane and spent the whole time studying the stuff. Class went right well. And that kind of uh, started my uh, teaching in uh, in CRM. Um, as far as teaching career, I started off as a uh, instructor at the U.S. Army Engineer School at Fort Belvoir back in uh, 1970. So I'm not exactly new to the uh, uh, to the profession of, of uh, being an instructor, but that was my first uh, uh, first CRM, at least, uh, instructing uh, gig and taught for them for a few years and then started uh, getting some other gigs and so on. And now I'm in a, a pretty comfortable place. I hope it stays. <laughs> Wow, that's that's so, that's so interesting. As in, definitely, you know, the decisions you've made, the paths you've taken to end up where you have, it's uh, it's quite unique. And that's the short version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me, over the years, um, you know, one of the things Microsoft require is, you know, community contribution. What type of things have you done over the years that kind of stand out for you when it comes to the contributions you've made in the community? Okay. Well, uh, first off, I'm in, involved with the uh, CRMUG, the CRM user group. Uh, I'm the uh, uh, local chapter leader of our uh, chapter here in San Antonio. It's uh, it's unusual that that a uh, a vendor, I guess I would be considered, or a partner, uh, is uh, uh, allowed to be in the leadership. But uh, due to my situation, they uh, being a one man shop, basically they uh, uh, allow me to be. 
And so that's part of it, running uh, that. But I also, I've, I have a study group that I uh, participate, not participate in, I uh, run. Uh, I actually been uh, been doing this uh, ever since 1997, believe it or not. So this is uh, this year the the group will be old enough to drink, uh, hit 21. <laughs> but uh, we meet uh, just about every uh, Saturday morning uh, for about three hours. We uh, started off uh, studying for additional uh, MCSE uh, certifications. Uh, I'd been through another study group that another guy here in town had started, and he started it just so he could get his MCSE. And once he did, he says, okay, I'm done. So I picked it up, and uh, uh, we started on all of the different Microsoft certifications having to do with Windows NT and Windows 2000 and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, probably pretty soon after I got my MVP, we've been doing uh, CRM stuff, start off with version 3 and then 4 and all the versions along the way. Uh, right now, we're kind of uh, working on Power Apps. I also have another little group called the uh, Alamo CRM XRM IT Pro Group that uh, we try to meet on a, uh, on a monthly basis, uh, but I also use it as a, a good conduit to uh, 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 kind of send out stuff of information. You know, I, I see a, uh, maybe a blog post posted by some guy maybe down in New Zealand or something, and so <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take that and uh, I'll send that link out to the group. And uh, I have another, another group that I also founded back in uh, 2004, uh, just before I went to that SMB Nation. Uh, I had asked uh, Harry about something. He said, well, you need to find your, your local user group. And I said, we don't have a local user group. He said, well, start one. So I did. Wow. <laughs> so we had uh, a fairly large group. Uh, I'm a past president of an organization. Unfortunately, organization is now pretty much defunct, but it, in its time, it was the second largest PC user group in, uh, in the country, in the U.S., uh, called the Alamo PC Organization. And when I was, I guess right after I was president, when I was president, we had about 3,500 members and uh, we ended up with about 6,500 uh, the following year. But uh, it was uh, kind of a, one of the special interest groups of that's how it started off. And then uh, uh, from that, we created this, uh, this other uh, group, the Alamo uh, uh, CRM XRM group. So, Larry, tell me a bit, that three-hour session that you have for your study group, what's the type of format that you run um, for the, the folks involved there? Well, you know, it's it varied by course and, and available courseware over the years. We had courses. I'd, uh, you know, go through the courses with them. Right now, we're going through the uh, Dynamics Learning Portal uh, courses together. And, you know, we, we can kind of discuss and, and uh, you know, embellish, so to speak, the, uh, the presentations and, and uh, that type of thing. Uh, we've had as many as uh, 15, I think, in the group at one point. But uh, we're a little bit smaller now. But uh, it's, it's fun <laughs> and it keeps me, uh, keeps me off the streets on Saturday morning, I guess. So tell me, uh, of all of the business application MVPs you've seen over your tenure, uh, or the you know the CRM or Dynamic CRM MVPs, which one um, you know really stands out out as uh, 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 in your mind, or if the if you have the greatest respect for, if you like, um, across the community. Oh my goodness, that's a that's a dangerous question to ask. Not, not just the current <laughs> ones, but even think longer. You know, the what you know, the, you've yeah, seen a few through yeah. the program, but you know, which one, if you like, really kind of stood out in your mind individually? Oh goodness gracious, that's uh, that's kind of hard to say. The uh, you know, some that popped to mind. Uh, Gus Gonzalez has been doing. Uh, uh, some some great stuff. He's he uh, got out of being a an employed uh, an employee and uh, having his own uh, his own company. Uh, certainly, the Yaks are uh, David and Julie are uh, very outstanding and uh, 
you know, kind of pillars of the community. I don't know what we do without totally, Julie. Totally, hundred <laughs> percent agree. There, she's, she's she's definitely our den mother. Um, thinking back on some of the uh, the older ones, I remember one of the the first guys I met was uh, Guy Riddle. Uh, met him at uh, uh, Convergence in in Dallas. And he was also one of the early uh, MVPs, John O'Donnell. John O'Donnell was the first uh, CRM MVP. Uh, he was out of Chicago, and uh, he uh, he left the program a, a few years after I uh, got uh, awarded uh, because, like so many, he got uh, uh, taken up by uh, by microsoft and has been with microsoft ever since yeah. wow that's so interesting that's so interesting larry out of uh here's a here's a kind of a a, a, a question out of left field but out of um all the purchases you've made what's the best hundred dollars that you've spent on something oh goodness gracious that's a lot of years to go back trying to uh <laughs> think of of what that might yeah, be. Is, is there one um, thing that you've purchased for a hundred dollars or less? It was just you've, uh, yeah, was you, you're very happy with it. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll throw out one. It was a little over a hundred dollars, and it's going to be totally, uh, you know, uh, off the track of what we've been talking about. But uh, I've been a ham radio operator since uh, since I was a kid. And not not that I'm that active these days, unfortunately. Used to enjoy talking to a lot of you guys down there in New Zealand and Aus, uh, Austri- Aus, I can say it, Australia. Yeah, and uh, but uh, uh, back in the uh, I guess it was in the mid '80s, uh, something called packet radio was uh, uh, getting very popular in the in the ham radio circuits. And so I bought myself a uh, packet controller for about $120 and uh, really had a great time uh, with that. Uh, mm-hmm. First uh, first introduction to TCP IP because yeah. they, uh, they started running that on it. But it was a way of, of uh, being able to uh, uh, to talk and send messages, uh, you know, across a uh, a network of uh, of repeaters and uh, and so on in in packets so that was kind of fun so that's that's what pops to mind it's probably yeah, not yeah, the best so hundred cool. dollars so I unique. ever spent but you know yeah I like it I like it so tell me uh, and this is really my final question here when you think of people being successful and as you say you've been doing this a long time um, is there any individual that comes to your mind when you think of you know a, a very successful person across your life career um, that, uh, you hold in esteem? I'm sure there, there's quite a number of them. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, one that pops to mind is a little political. I'll probably, uh, uh, not go there, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, I think my dad, uh, is probably would be a good, uh, example there. Uh, he, uh, uh, he founded his own uh, uh, stock brokerage firm. He referred to himself as an investment banker and uh, was well-known and well-respected uh, uh, not only around town, but in the industry. Uh, he had a uh, seat on the New York Stock Exchange when his firm did, but, uh, you know, he was he and his, his uh, lifelong best friend were, uh, were partners. So I'll use that as my example. That's 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 fantastic. I always love it when it's a family member, um, you know, and that connection has come about. Larry, it's been great having you on the uh, MVP show. If people want to connect with you online, where can they find you? Well, certainly on Twitter, uh, at CRM Larry. Uh, that's probably the best place. I occasionally go to Facebook. Uh, email address, uh, Larry at LinzComputer.com. Hey, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and leave feedback on your favorite podcast app. If you want to look at the show notes, please go to nz365guide.com forward slash 32.